Hi dear students, in this video we are going to discuss this example. So what we have matrix space N D, N means set of natural numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. D is a usual matrix on R. Usual matrix means it is defined in this way. D of x, y is equal to mod x minus y. Okay, so this is the definition of D. This matrix space we have, we have to prove that every Cauchy sequence, what we have to prove? Every Cauchy sequence is eventually constant. Okay, this thing we have to prove first and after that we have to prove using this result we have to prove ND is a complete matrix space. So let us start to prove the first part. Okay, so uh, we have a Cauchy sequence and we have to prove that it is eventually constant. That means every Cauchy sequence is eventually constant. Eventually constant means what? Eventually constant that means a sequence. Uh, which first terms can be different just like 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 7, 8 like that. But after a few terms, all remaining terms will be same just like 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. So that is called eventually constant sequence. We have to prove that every Cauchy sequence is eventually constant. So let us start to prove. What will I do? I will take any arbitrary Cauchy sequence and I will prove that it is eventually constant. Let let xn be any Cauchy sequence in ND. Okay, so I have taken any Cauchy sequence. We have to prove it is eventually constant. First of all, I will use the definition of Cauchy sequence. Definition of Cauchy sequence says for given epsilon greater than 0, but see here, I will select a particular epsilon which is 1 by 2. Okay, so let us take. So therefore, for epsilon is equal to half, obviously it is positive. There exists set of uh, n belongs to set of natural number such that d of xn xm less than epsilon for all n m greater than or equal to capital N. So by definition of Cauchy sequence, I could write it. But here I have chosen epsilon is equal to 1 by 2. So let us put the value of epsilon. Therefore, d of xn xm less than half for all n m greater than or equal to capital N. Here n and m are any natural numbers which are greater than capital N, right? So here I will fix my m. I will fix m is equal to capital N. So let me mention in particular, in particular, d of xn x n less than half for all n greater than or equal to capital N. So now my m is fixed which is capital N and small n can vary okay it, it can be it is greater than or equal to capital N right. So this thing we have got but see what is d as I told you earlier d is a usual distance uh, d of x y is equal to mod x minus y. So I should use the actual definition of d here let me mention. So therefore I can write mod xn minus x capital N less than half for all n greater than or equal to capital N. See there is one popular result or uh, one property of real number modulus actually. So that is mod a less than b if and only if minus b less than a less than b. Okay, so this is most famous result. Most and frequently we use this thing. Okay, so here also I'm going to use. So in this case, uh, our A is this xn minus x capital N and B is half, right? So let us use this result. So using this result, I can write minus half since minus B is there less than this A xn minus x capital N less than half. I should carry this condition, right? Uh, we use this result, let us go further. Now what will I do? I will add xn in all sides. So I am adding xn, so you will have xn, x capital N minus half. If you add xn, x a capital N here, that minus x capital N and plus x capital N will get cancelled to each other. And we will have simply xn less than, here also I am adding x capital N. So I got this one with this condition, right? That means what I want to say that xn lies between these two. Okay, xn lies between these two. Let me draw the diagram. Uh, yes. So with the help of di diagram, we are trying to understand. So this is xn is here fixed. 
xn plus half it will be here xn plus half and xn minus half it will be here xn minus half so this xn can be anything okay it, it, it lies between these two so that's why i should write here therefore xn belongs to this open interval i am saying open interval since we have strictly inequality when you have less than or equal to we write closed interval so xn belongs to xn minus half xn plus half i should carry this condition for all n greater than or equal to capital n but the important thing is this xn is a natural number right and this xn is also natural number since we are talking about this matrix space nd all xn's are natural numbers basically let me mention here here xn and x capital n are natural numbers okay these are two natural numbers see if xn is x capital n is a natural number what will be the next natural number obviously the next natural number is xn plus 1. What will be the previous natural number? The previous natural number will be xn minus 1, just like this one. Suppose 4 is a natural, obviously 4 is a natural number. What is the next natural number? 5. That means 4 plus 1. And what is the previous natural number, which is 3? That means 4 minus 1, just like this. Okay. So the same logic I am using here. So the next natural number is xn plus 1, previous natural number is xn minus 1. So which natural number lies in this interval that xn only? We have, we don't have any other choice, get it? So in this interval, this is the only natural number and here we are saying xn is a natural number lies in this interval. So therefore, that xn is equal to x capital N, right? No choice we have since this is the only natural number which lies in this interval. So therefore, xn is equal to x capital N and this is true for n greater than or equal to capital N. But see, this is definition of uh, eventually constant sequence. Let me mention you. What we are saying here, we have a sequence like this x1, x2, x3 and so on. xn minus 1, next xn. But we are saying if small n greater than or equal to capital N, the term is equal to xn, that means all remaining terms will be xn. So this is definition of eventually constant sequence. So therefore, I can mention, therefore, xn is eventually constant, right? So we started with any arbitrary Cauchy sequence and we proved that it is eventually constant. So that's why we can declare in this matrix space ND, where D is a usual distance, every Cauchy sequence is eventually constant. So let me clearly mention that thing. Just make a screenshot of it, then I will go further. So here I have clearly mentioned that every Cauchy sequence in ND is eventually constant. So the half part of this example is done. Let us prove the second half. Second half is we have to prove that ND is complete. Let me mention. Now, to prove that nd is complete so tell me first when we say the matrix space is complete if every Cauchy sequence is convergent then we say matrix space is complete that means we have to take any arbitrary Cauchy sequence and we have to prove that it is convergent so let us start with one Cauchy sequence let a n b a Cauchy sequence in nd Okay, but just now we proved every Cauchy sequence in ND is eventually constant. So this is Cauchy sequence. So that's why it is also eventually constant sequence. Therefore, N is eventually constant. Eventually constant means what? We have a sequence. First few terms are different, but after some fixed term, you will get all terms same. So here also, therefore, I can mention, therefore, there exists some natural number k such that n is equal to a for all n greater than or equal to k. That means the sequence will be like this a1, a2, a3 and so on 
a k minus 1 and after that you will have a a a a all terms will be a so we say it is eventually constant sequence right so now our target is to prove it is con convergent sequence so here i will prove that this sequence n will converge to that point a so this is our target okay so obviously i am going to use the definition of convergent sequence we will start with one any arbitrary epsilon let me mention let uh, here i will mention okay let epsilon greater than 0 be given okay i have taken any arbitrary epsilon and for this epsilon we have to prove that n converges to a that means that means what we have to prove we have to prove d of n comma a less than epsilon then we can say n converges to a okay so let us start to work on this consider i am finding the value of d of n comma a distance between n and a but see n is equal to a so i can write here d a n is equal to m a so i am replacing n by a but see there is one condition when n is equal to a if n is greater than or equal to k so i should mention this condition if our n greater than or equal to k then only we can write n is equal to a but see here we have got both points same a and a both points same then distance is zero distance is 0 since both points same and 0 is less than epsilon since we have already stated that epsilon is greater than 0 that is d of n comma a we started with this we got less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to k but see this is definition of convergent sequence therefore n converges to a in nd right Indeed. So, this is usual distance. Uh, yes, I have taken a usual distance mod n minus a. Uh, see, n converges to a. So, we started with any Cauchy sequence and we proved that it is convergent. So, let me mention. Therefore, let me remove this part. Therefore, every Cauchy sequence is convergent in nd so therefore nd is complete matrix space therefore nd is a complete matrix space actually this is definition of complete matrix space that is every Cauchy sequence is convergent we got therefore we can declare nd is complete matrix space so in this way we have completed this example just make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you in next video